Hi, this is Lance from Langchain. A few days ago, a pretty nice tweet went out from one of the prompt engineers at Anthropic talking about using Claude Opus 3 um, for prompt engineer. And the argument was that Claude Opus 3 is extremely capable of prompt engineering. And it kind of presented a workflow to do this. So basically, starting with a task and a prompt, um, using Opus generate a diverse test set, um, running the, the basically the prompt against the test set to go to setting generations, um, evaluating those generations, and then here's the crux, using those evaluations to basically improve the initial prompt and doing that iteratively. So you can kind of think of it as kind of a, a workflow that looks like this. You create a data set, you create an initial prompt, you compute the generations on our data set with the initial prompt, you grade them, you regenerate the prompt. That's kind of it. So it's kind of a nice general workflow that can be applied to lots of things. And I said, let's try this out and apply it to a problem that is like pretty common, which is writing style. So let's try something like paper summarization on Twitter. Now, if you ask an LM to produce a, a summary of a paper, you'll get like a, a reasonable response that can be kind of dry. Um, relative to, there's a lot of users on Twitter, uh, Elvis uh, from Dare in particular, that produce really nice, tasteful paper summaries. And, and Elvis is, I think, are really, really strong. Um, mm -hmm. He puts out a you know, paper summary almost every day. They tend to be really nice, compact, but also kind of thoughtful, provide like rhetorical questions. So they're kind of in a style that's really nice. And so here's like kind of a challenge. Let's try to kind of build a, you know, a prompt through iterative feedback that can summarize papers in the style of Elvis. Um, so to kick this off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and load three papers that I know Elvis has reviewed. Um, and again, here's a notebook, a few Pippin Sols, I'm using Langsmith, and I'm, I have Anthropic API key set. And we're going to go ahead and load those three papers. So we're going to load them from archive. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a Langsmith data set called Elvis Bot. We'll kind of call this Elvis Bot for fun. So this should be now created over in Langsmith. Yep, here we go. So here's a data set. It contains those three papers, just the paper text, and that's it. So that's kind of our starting point. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this over and I'll kick this off and I'll explain what's going on. So here we're going to go ahead and load chat Anthropic uh, and we're going to lot use Claw 3 Opus. Now here's an initial prompt that's kind of reasonable, right? So like you're an assistant that generates tweets to still academic papers, um, to be all crafted, avoid gimmicks, avoid buzzwords. So it's like a reasonable starting prompt, you know, and we'll see in a minute. Here we go. There's our response. And let's just kind of see what this looks like. You just kind of say, here's a tweet to summarize. Now this is the paper we passed in, RAT. RAT significantly improves LLM reasoning and generation and long horizon tasks. So, you know, it's, it's pretty factual, it's reasonable. It's definitely not the most like spicy for Twitter, but you know, it's a good starting point. Now what I'm gonna do is, let's go ahead and run uh, our chain here, this tweet generator, which is basically our initial prompt um, and Claude 3 Opus on our data set, which contains our three papers of interest. So if we go over to our data set, we, again, this is in Lagsmith. <clears throat> you can find this under your data sets and testing in Lagsmith. Here's the three papers, and you can see under tests, you're going to start to see generations roll in. This is basically Claude 3 churning through the texts of those three examples and producing our summary tweets. Again, using our base case prompt. So again, in each case, we're using this prompt. It looks like that finished. Now, I did something kind of fun here, which I'm going to show you. I created this annotation queue, and I basically added these runs on our data set, which we defined uh, right here. We create our data set. Um, that now contains, you can see annotation queues here. This contains the generations that we just ran. You can see here's our run. Here's the three generations. 
Again, here's the inputs. Here's the outputs. Now, if I go to the annotation queue, I go to output spot, they're here. Now, here's where we can start to have some fun. So these are our three papers. Right here is just the input for the first paper, and here's the output. So this is the wrap paper. Now, this is where I can provide feedback to the system. So if you think about our overall workflow, we're kind of down here, where we've set up our test set, basically, with contains a few papers, we've initial prompt, we've run our generation, and now we're going to provide some feedback on those generations. Now, this is where you can get very flexible. You can really put in anything here. But what, are, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to pull up some example tweets from Elvis related to these three papers. And I'm going to add those as feedback. So this first paper is called RAT, Retrieval Augmented Thoughts. I'm going to go ahead, if you go over here, so here's what our initial prompt produced. Here's a tweet to summarize RAT. Now, here is basically a binary score flag that you get kind of for free when you kick off this annotation queue. I'm going to say I don't like this. I'm going to give negative feedback. I'm going to say here is a better tweet. Boom. And I'm just going to copy that in. So I'm adding that as my feedback in the annotation queue. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically suck this feedback in and we're going to regenerate a prompt and we're going to run this loop again. But first I need to go through this kind of feedback phase. So I just hit done and that kind of load that basically registers that feedback. Now the second paper empowering LLMs, uh, agents. Okay. So let's go ahead and find that paper. It's this guy right here, empowering LLM agents, copy this over. So again, I'm just going to say, I don't like this response. We can go down and actually read it. It's a little bit more verbose, but let's just say here's a better one. We'll add that in. There we go. We'll say done. And now to the final one, which is going to be this guy. Can L1 trees in plaid? There we go. And again, we can see the response down here. It's pretty sparse. We'll say we don't like that. Here's a better tweet. There we go. Cool. So we've gone ahead and registered our feedback using this annotation queue. So if we kind of zoom back out, where are we? We're right here. Create our test set, create initial prompt, computed generations. We just provided feedback using a length with annotation queue against each one of those, using feedback directly from the tweets from Elvis that we actually like on those same papers. So that's really it. And here's what we can do. Here's some utility functions. Don't worry too much about what's actually going on in them. I'll just show you right here. So this basically just sucks in that feedback we just generated. So you can look here. This is just all the feedback we just put in there along with the initial tweets. And you'll see very shortly, we can use this to regenerate our prompt. So here we go. I'm going to kick this process off and then I'll explain what we're doing. So what we're doing here is I actually have what I, I've already created this one I call the optimizer prompt. Now this is just over in, again, Langsmith. So in Langsmith, you have your annotation queue, you have your data sets. We created our data set it's right here. We just looked at our annotation queue right here. There's also a prompt hub. And this prompt hub, we actually have, um, I'll go ahead and close this down, close this down. In our prompt hub, you can search for various prompts. So let's go ahead and search for the prompt that I created here. Here we go. And this is public, so anyone can access this. So this is actually the crux of it. This is a prompt I created to take that feedback we just basically input to the annotation queue and regenerate a new prompt. So this is just what I kind of wrote, and you could tune this as you want. You're an expert prompt engineer focused on generating tweets in a particular style. You'll be shown the current prompt and a set of annotated predictions, which are tweets made by Claude 3 using this current prompt. The predictions come with user feedback and the score. Your job is to improve the prompt to address the user, user provided score and feedback. And then we're just plumbing that in. So here is the prompt. Here you can be our predictions and we just, you know, have a bunch of stuff, analyze it. And again, you can tune this however you want, you know, but the main point is if I zoom all the way back up, now we're here. So we provide our feedback. We put that in a patient queue. 
I'm now using kind of a prompt regeneration prompt to basically take that feedback and then regenerate our initial prompt. And again, we're using Claude 3 to do that. So this kind of a nice process. Now here is the new prompt that we generated. Okay, so you know it's pretty detailed. Remember our starting prompt was like pretty limited, reasonable, but limited, right? You're an assistant, you're doing great tweets, um, you know. And now we've incorporated this feedback, which should hopefully capture some kind of interesting nuances about the way Elvis writes in this new prompt. And it provides maybe a few shot example here. So let's try this out. All we're gonna do is just very simply rerun um, on our eval set with new prompt. We're creating a new chain with new prompt. So a new prompt is defined right here. No problem. We kick that off. It's running against our data set. And we're also gonna add these new generations to our annotation queue. So that's really all you need to know. So that's kind of going on right now. Again, if we zoom back up, where are we? So now we're here and we regenerate our prompt. So we have our eval set. We initially tried with our first starting prompt, got our generations. We use annotation queue to kind of review them. And in that process, we injected kind of information from Elvis's tweets that we think you know, is better, a better style. We capture that feedback in a regeneration prompt. We regenerate our initial prompt. We try it again. So it looks like that got went ahead and ran. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and kick off one thing to show you while we go ahead and have a look. So right now, we can actually can go back to our annotation queue and look at our updated examples. So here's our annotation queue. We go to alpha spot. And here we're going to see our new runs are registered. Again, here's the input paper. Now let's go down. Okay, so this is kind of cool. Look at our tweet now. It's a lot more kind of colorful than we saw initially. Here is a tweet summary of the paper rat. Um, improving the LLM reasoning and task. It adds emojis, which is pretty cool. Rat Italy revises chain of thoughts using information retrieval, um, the key idea, and its context, you know, and adds a question. So, you know, again, we can see that like it's a lot more colorful. Um, and again, you can kind of turn this crank many times if you'd like. Um, so I'm going to go ahead in my feedback, I'm going to say, I like that. Good. Um, so there we go. Um, and here's kind of another paper. We can kind of look at the tweet here, learning to act. Um, so again, it adds like a bunch of new lines. It spaces this out kind of nicely. Um, and this app, yeah. So it kind of adds emojis. It looks kind of fun and adds a, a, you know, a question. So again, let's just, you know, for fun call that. Yeah, we like that one. Um, and likewise, uh, let's kind of look at the final one. You know, again, this is our last paper. Ken Elm is really recent and plan. Um, and you know, here's a new paper. Um, yeah. So again, like, and, and kind of ends up a question. So we're going to go ahead and say, we like that. So again, the tweets are kind of getting more engaging. They're hopefully matching the style that we provided through feedback. And again, you can continue this loop, you know, many different times. Um, so this is um, running on, we, I went ahead and kicked this off. So this is a paper that was mentioned, um, and actually I kind of show it here. This is a paper that was mentioned in a tweet by Elvis, but it wasn't really saw that. So this is LLMs on tabular data. Um, yeah, here's an overview. He mentions a little bit about it, but it doesn't like go in depth. So I said, okay, let's try our new prompt on this to kind of produce a tweet in Elvis' style. Um, again, here was the paper, and we kicked that off. Now, here was the original tweet. Again, this is using our original chain. So here is a potential tweet to summarize the paper. New survey using LLMs for tabular data, tasks like prediction generation, question answering, covers key techniques. So this is like the original summary. Like, it, it's okay. Now, here's our new tweet. LLMs for tabular data, comprehensive survey. This survey provides the first, um, the first the review of using LLMs for tabular data. Like, it covers key techniques. They also discuss current limitations, but Elms eventually replace traditional ML for tabular tasks. This lays to find out. So, you know, again, we've done a lot better than our initial uh, our initial try. We've only done one kind of round of iteration. We've shown a pretty simple way to basically incorporate feedback. Um, the tweet looks, you know, a lot better than it did initially. It kind of captures to some degree, I think, the style that we see in, in some of Elvis, Elvis' tweets. Um, so again, kind of like zooming all the way back out, what we've done is we've gone through this loop once 
And now we're looking at, you know, the generation from a paper that's outside of a test set, um, which is kind of a new paper on tabular data, as shown here, that Elvis had not actually, uh, you know, summarized. And you can see that the summary we get using this, you know, Claude 3 kind of turn the crank and, and like kind of prompt optimized approach is definitely a lot better and seems to adhere to the style of Elvis's tweets, um, you know, much more closely than what we saw in the original guess. So again, it's, it's a pretty cool technique, very general, um, can be applied to all sorts of different tasks. And I think it's, it's definitely worth experimenting with Claude 3 quite a bit, particularly for prompt engineering. It seems like a really general, uh, really promising general approach um, to improve your prompts. Thanks.